Technical Briefing, India. This year we will be in India for the second time uh, for the world, F1 World Championship and uh, it is uh, obviously new but we have some information from uh, last year. Uh, the track is um, a mix of longitudinal and, uh, and lateral uh, sections although with a slight prevalence uh, of, of lateral uh, ones. Last year it was a uh, uh, pretty dirty every day uh, because of the construction works that were still um, still on site and this obviously uh, requires uh, some uh, extra care when we prepare the, the setup of the cars. Um, India uh, falls in, with, in average for some uh, of the parameters, for example is a low bumpiness uh, circuit, uh, the curbs are not really an issue. Uh, what requires uh, some attention is that uh, generally it's quite dirty because it's not used very often. Last year was particularly dirty because of the construction works which were uh, on site. There are two relatively uh, long straights, uh, but also some twisted corners and some typically Tilke signature corners like turn 10 and 11, uh, where the, the front tires for sure are, um, are having quite uh, hard times. Uh, as I said, the, there are some corners in, uh, in the Delhi circuit which will be, could be quite hard for the front tires, and this requires particular attention in the, in the setup of, uh, of the suspension of the car. So I, I will try to explain you some of the changes that we do when you hear on the radio uh, ride eye change or stiffness change or anti roll bar change. Okay, what, what we see here is the part of the, of the front suspension of the car, pretty much from, from the chassis to where the wheels are. Uh, first of all, what is the purpose of, of, of a suspension system? Uh, the the pri primary purpose is to keep the car off the ground, to make sure that the only uh, thing which is in touch with the ground is actually the wheel. Well, it's also used, obviously, to absorb all the bumps which are on the track, the curbs, and this is not just for driver comfort, which we only uh, care relatively in, in a race car, uh, but it's also because the more we can be compliant um, uh, with the car towards the track, uh, the more grip we can extract out of the tires. So this is a very important part of what we call the mechanical grip, to distinguish it from the aerodynamic grip, which is also obviously even more important in a Formula One car. So on one side, you want to have all this system to be, to, to be very compliant with the road, to be soft, because this would guarantee that basically, as you might have seen on TV sometime when they show a close-up of the wheel, the wheel is very, very free to move, to follow all the, uh, all the bumps and all the asperities of, of, um, of the track. But if you go too much on the other side, uh, you might have some problem. First of all, the driver will, will report a lack of, of reaction on his uh, input on the steering wheel, and you might have heard that on, on the radio sometimes. And uh, the other problem is that uh, the suspension works in principle like the one of a road car, but there is a very, very big difference between the suspension in a road car and a suspension in a, in a Formula One car. Uh, the suspension in the road car only needs to hold the weight of the car. Suspension in a Formula One car has to hold a variable weight because on top of the over 600 kilos of the car with speed you have the, the downforce, the aerodynamic force which is going to push down the car and so the whole suspension must hold uh, like three times the weight of the car in, when, when you are at high speed, high downforce configuration. This is why there are some details that I will go through um, um, in a minute that will show you the differences and why there are these differences between a, a Formula One car and a road car. So, let's talk about the front of the car. So when, when the car is running, the wheels are in touch with the ground and the, the chassis in an ideal world, the, the, the wheel don't move and, and the chassis just uh, uh, follows through, through, through the suspension, follows and um, basically the, the, the wheel absorbs all the bumps of the track. So what are the components that allow uh, the car to do this uh, as, 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 as well as possible? 
First of all, we need to think uh, uh, and what kind of movements there can be in, a, in an axle. Uh, basically, these movements can be simplified to two movements. One is when, uh, let's say, the, the, the chassis moves at the same time in relation to the two wheels, which is called uh, a heave movement. And one is when uh, the chassis moves uh, in a different or opposite direction between the two wheels, uh, which happens in two situations. When the car is uh, in, in a corner, there is this movement which is called roll, by which, the, let's say, the chassis rolls against one of the wheels and away from the other. And the other situation where the movement is not exactly the same is if one of the wheels hits a bump or a curb, and then it's a single kind of single wheel movement. To be able to tune uh, to, our, to how we like the car, obviously there cannot be only a single element uh, taking care of all these different things. So normally there are, um, in a normal car there are two elements that take care of that, and in a race car there are three, which uh, we'll explain in a minute. So in order to uh, cope with the different, uh, different movements of the car um, in relation to the wheels, uh, we have a, a one system which basically only uh, takes care exclusively of the roll movement or the single wheel movement, which is what we call anti-roll bar. Basically, it's, it's a system, uh, it's, it's a bar, um, in, it's a torsion bar in some cases or some different kind of link bars in, in other systems that is neutral when the two wheels are moving together so when when we are in heave condition but it kind of reacts when only one of the wheels is moving or if the car is actually rolling this is why it's called anti-roll bar um, why do we need this and why don't we use the same system to to prevent the roll uh, because if we were using the springs or the torsion bar that we normally use to prevent the heave also for the roll, it would lead us to a, to a kind of a compromise uh, by which we should be too stiff in one of the movements to be able to compensate also for the others. For the others. And in general, it is always better to be well, how we say decoupled so that we can have a better control in the um, in each one of the different uh, movements of the car uh, finally this is all these are all things that exist also in road car uh, one specific element which uh, exists uh, pretty much only in ro race cars which have wings which have downforce is uh, the so-called uh, central element or third element what I will show you here now is, is a, a part of the rear um, central element, which is the rear central element spring, because it's bigger, it's easier to see. Uh, basically, this element does pretty much the opposite of what the anti-roll bar does. We said that the anti-roll bar only acts when the two wheels are moving not at the same time and nothing in other conditions. This is linked in a way uh, that it only works if the two wheels are moving at the same time and if we are in roll, basically it does, it does nothing. Uh, when we are at the track, uh, and you might have heard this on the radio, uh, we adjust the ride height of the car very often. This is done for aerodynamic reason or sometimes simply because we are running too low and we need to hold the car off the ground a little bit more. Uh, what we can see here is the one possible way, the way we use to adjust the front ride height. You see this one is called push road and basically connects uh, through a rocker and a torsion bar, connects uh, the, the front right wheel in this case to the chassis. And so basically this is a, is a, is a rod which defines how high the car is sitting uh, compared to the ground. And if you look here, you will see that there are some shims that are uh, of any uh, thickness that we, that we can decide and they are stacked up so that we, the, the, the race engineer can uh, define and decide how many must be in to guarantee that the ride height is exactly where he wants. Just to give you an idea, the 
the resolution at which uh, race engineers adjust uh, the, the ride of the car is in the range of the 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeters.